Hey guys, welcome back to Jordan's Film Quest. Today I have a special guest. We're taking you back to the 80s with the classic movie Maximum Overdrive by Stephen King. I'm here with Tim Shockey. He owns the Green Goblin Head from the movie and he's gonna tell us a little, about, little bit about the history of this thing. So, let's check it out. Hi, I'm Tim Shockey, and I own this big green guy right here. I, um, in 1987, my brother called me up one day, and he's like, Hey, there's a guy that's got the big goblin head off the truck and maximum overdrive for sale down here. Uh, all my family live in North Carolina, I live in Ohio. And uh, so he said, I thought maybe you'd want it for your video store. I'm like, well, yeah. So he gave me the number. I called the guy up right then and drove all night that night and come back the next day with it. Uh, we just played it in the video store for, I don't know, five, six, seven years till we sold the business. And then we brought it home and it laid in the backyard. You know, whoa, it laid in the backyard looking like this? No. It's actually a picture right here of what it looked like when I first got it. It was gone from here down top of the years from about here up were gone and the whole thing was burnt inside and out where they blew it up at the end of the movie. So it laid in the backyard about 20 years. The dog used it for a dog house. The kids played on it. One day the wife hit it with a riding mower and knocked this ear off. She didn't do it on purpose. She hated this thing but she didn't do it on purpose. And I'm like that's it. So I moved it to my garage. I knew someday I wanted to restore it and uh, when my youngest child turned 18 I started. Uh, it was early part of 2011 and uh, I sat out there for probably I don't know, three or four days just trying to figure out what to do. It was just such a mess. Uh, I mean the stuff that was burned on this thing was probably a quarter of an inch thick. You couldn't really sand it. Grind, I mean it was it was a mess. So I started it and uh, March the 16th of 2013 it was finished. Um, the last month or so, I had to hand sand everything. It was because my air sanders wouldn't get into the little tight spots, you know, like in here and so on. And finally, I just said, you know what, enough's enough. I'll put it in primer and get it painted. So we did. And um, the following weekend, I was at Horror Hound in Cincinnati. And I've been touring ever since. And uh, I've been all across the U.S. and Canada with it. And uh, we can. We want to continue doing it as long as we can. Bring it to all the fans. So this is the exact goblin head that was going throughout the entire movie that you see circling the Dixie truck stop, you know, going after everybody. Um, this is the only one used in the movie. There was none other... There was a backup, but it was never used. Uh, and Stephen King stood in front of it and did the trailer. It's got actually black eyes instead of red. Uh, they let the JCs use it for a haunted house down there in Wilmington. Uh, a year or so. It sat out in front of the theater on the night of the premiere and then it sat on the back lot until it about fell apart. A guy that built stuff for the movie, he actually is the guy that built the Dixie Boy truck stop for the movie. Uh, it, he ended up with it and it's in his salvage or whatever place. Um, he's not allowed to sell it, restore it, do anything with it. He's under contract for everything that he takes from the studios. Uh, it's just sitting there in the field deteriorating. Uh, he said, if I could get rid of it, he said, you would be the one that would get it, Tim. He said, I, you know, I know that you would do the right thing with it, but he can't, he can't do anything with it. Wow, that's, that's awesome. I mean, it's awesome that you've completely restored this thing and you just recently repainted it, right? Actually, on the 25th of July, which was the 20th, or the 35th anniversary of the movie. 
being released. It was released uh, July the 25th, 19, or 18, or not, uh, 1986. So. I wasn't even born yet. <laughs> so this was, no, my brother wasn't even born yet. That's crazy. But, um, like, yeah, we grew up on these kind of movies, like the Stephen King movies. But, um, like I said, I made my girlfriend watch this the other night. Well, I didn't make her, but she she was sitting on the couch reading, and I had put this on because I wanted to, you know, get more of, like, a background for this. And within, like, the first you know two or three minutes she started watching it because the bridge that goes up and everything just goes berserk it was just it was just chaos from beginning to end and it was it's a great movie it is it uh it did better at the box office or at the on home video than it did at the box office it flopped at the box office and really yeah when it went to home video we couldn't keep it in the store and um, we had two video stores back then one at that time, the So I was trying to actually find a copy of this DVD to get, and it's like almost impossible to find nowadays. I don't know why. Like, is is it just that popular, or it, it is really? Um, Lionsgate Film sent a crew out here back in uh, 2018 and shot a documentary on me on the restoration. And then they released Maximum Overdrive on Blu-ray, and this is one of the features on it. It's got a lot of cool cast features or interviews. It's got uh, some, some other people behind the scenes talking about what happened. And um, when they released this, I think every Walmart got five copies, uh, and that was it. They didn't expect it to do all that great. They just did it. Well, it sold out and they had to start production again. This is what I was told from one of the guys from the crew that, uh, that did this. And I've now got it in, uh, I think, four other, from four other countries. Uh, it's, it was distributed around the world eventually. And uh, it's, uh, it's pretty cool to know my story's out there everywhere. Yeah, like I was looking online and most of the copies that I found were like Italian or the Spanish versions. Like it's almost impossible. I mean, unless you want to pay like a lot of money for just like a regular version of it. But well, you can buy this new Blu-ray release. I think it's about $24. You can get it on Amazon, uh, eBay. I know Amazon's got plenty of them. Yeah, we ordered it off of, was it Amazon Prime Video or something like that? It was on there, so... Yeah, you can watch that, but you're not going to get the Blu-ray version, which has all the interviews and everything. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm going to have to... You can actually buy the hard copy, you know what I'm saying, the, the Blu-ray copy. Nice. Okay, so what made you want this, the Goblin Head? At the time, I didn't collect this stuff. I don't think really anybody did. But by having the video store, I thought, well, that, you know, that would uh, that'd really be cool knowing that I had the only one in the world that was, you know, used in this movie. And um, I figured that my, my customers would really like it. When I got it back, it wouldn't even fit in my front door. I didn't think about it being so big, you know, but I had it in for where I have my sign shop. So I took it in through the, the end, the big garage door there, and I'd let customers go down the hallway and go back in there and see it. And, a lot of them still remember seeing it for the first time and all, and it was, it was pretty cool. Even though it was a burnt mess, it was, you could make out what it was, and the thought of knowing where it came from. Oh, yeah. Happy, you know. Absolutely, because the horror genre, genre is just, like, has a huge fan base, so oh, yeah. especially, like, props and stuff, like, oh, yeah. And I had a guy and his girlfriend come over from England to see this thing back in early 2018. Wow. They flew into Chicago, rented a car, and drove straight here. That's crazy. Yeah, so I got a guy coming from Italy sometime this year, yet to see it, him and his girlfriend. And I got a guy coming from California in October to shoot a music video with it. That's so cool. So, every That's... little bit gets it out there to, for people to see. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Did you see the autographs? 
Where? Behind this ear. So this is Joe. His name is Pat. Pat Miller. Pat, Pat Miller. Uh huh. And he was the one in the movie. Yeah, he chewed the bubble gun. He was the mechanic. The hose broke on him. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this one is the video game guy, yeah. where all the video games blew up. <laughs> That's crazy. What's in store for the future for this thing? Well, as of now, I'm going to keep traveling. Uh, I'm booking all the events I can book with it. I want to get it out to all the fans I can get it out to. Um, the money that I'm making from all this, I'm saving back. Uh, I want to build a museum. I have over 800 movie props now, and uh, I want. I'm, I'm getting older. It's getting harder for me to do some of this stuff. So, my, like I say, my goal is to open up a museum right here where I live, um, and uh, let everybody come here and see it. Yeah, because you travel quite a lot. Yeah. How many shows do you think, you, well, not since COVID, but before pre-COVID, how many shows were you doing? I don't remember. I did a post on Facebook. I know I had traveled, uh, before this year, I had traveled about 36,000 miles, just taking it to, for fans to see. And your first convention with this was Horror Hound Cincinnati, right. 2013? 13. I think that's... March of 2013. I must have just missed you because that was actually my very first convention that I went to was Horror Hound. So I've been doing them ever since. So I probably ran into you at that point and I've been doing Horror Hound and all those. I did much. Horror Hound that year in Cincinnati and I did the one in Indianapolis. That's where I saw you at was Indianapolis because you, um, you were the vendor room, I believe, like yeah. towards the back. Yeah, I was back by the back door. Yeah, I remember that. I was the last one able to load in and the first one to get out. <laughs> it makes it super easy. Oh, yeah. All right, so if fans want to reach you or contact you, we will put a link in the description below. What is your contact information? Okay, you can find me on Facebook at Green Goblin Head, all one word. I have a website called thegoblinproject.com. Uh, if you want to book us for an event, it's real simple. Book us at thegoblinproject.com, which you can also do from our website. And uh, that's pretty much it. And of course, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, all those under Green Goblin Head, all one word. Okay, that's going to do it for the Green Goblin Head. A special thanks to Tim for taking the time to do this quick little interview. I hope you guys enjoyed, and remember, his link will be in the description below. You guys can go check out where he's going to be at or try and book him for any of your events. So uh, stay scared, stay safe, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks, Thank Tim. You. You're welcome. Thank you.